This morning we wake up camping in the Swiss Alps. How cool is that? But this morning we're packing up and we're heading to northern Italy. Well, it's getting on towards lunchtime, and having entered into Italy, it's time to look for some lunch. Wow, what a beautiful setting here. And of course, pizza. It's pretty hot and humid today, but after lunch, we suit up again and head south to Vercelli, Italy. Well, I guess we can't go this way. Looks like the road's closed. We often travel with the avoidance features on the Zumo GPS set to tolls and highways. It's not really a problem. We quite enjoy it, but quite often you find roads that don't go in the direction that Zumo thinks you should go. That was a road close sign, wasn't it? Well, we'll just keep on going. We're on a motorcycle after all. Maybe we can get through. Definitely looks like some storm damage came through here. Well, you're not getting a motorcycle through that. I guess we'll have to turn around and find another way. Well, that took some doing, but we did get around that roadblock. One thing I didn't realize was that this Vercelli area is known for rice production. Rice fields for miles. Well, we made it to Vercelli, one of the oldest cities in northern Italy. We find our way to the Vercelli Palace for the night. On our walk back to the Vercelli Palace, you're wondering what's behind this wall. It turns out it's probably an old psych ward. Um, still in existence? It's, it's still there. There's pictures on the internet of people climbing this wall and taking pictures in an abandoned building that looked pretty freaky. I'm, I don't think we're going to do that. I'm sure it would be haunted. I certainly would hope so. I'm following Kathy into the sanatorium, so if we don't return... <clears throat> yeah. Oh, this is how people get in. Did you bring your flashlight? Wheelchair. Oh, yes. No, no flashlight. This is just a lookout kind of thing. Electrical stuff. Mm. Cabina electrical. Oh yeah. 
and we're still outside the fence. Oh. Not getting over that. So why are we in Ver Vercelli anyway? Well, the OTAS was made here and some of you have been watching the videos. We'll see that we have this little weird green car. It's a Lombardi made by Francis Lombardi who was from Vercelli and he built the cars here. So uh, we think we found the factory. We definitely found his airfield. He was also a airplane constructor. Um, so that's all kind of fun. We'll do a little more of that in the morning. Well, when I was 15 years old, my dad took possession of his dream car. It was called an OTAS. It was a tiny little car based on a Fiat. It had a custom coach-built body from the Francis Lombardi Company in Vercelli, Italy. Over the years, it got stored in several garages until finally a restoration was undertaken. In 2000, the body was painted. Over the next 20 years, slow progress eventually resulted in a finished car. Over the decades, we've accumulated nearly every printed document about the OTAS. One address comes out time and time again, 200 Strada Trino. My goal today, let's find the factory building and does it still exist? Could this be the Francis Lombardi factory? I don't know. We'll probably find out if, if this isn't it, but boy, it sure looks the part. It looks the vintage. While studying these photos back and forth, it sure looks like the building is the same. While the roof and windows have likely been replaced in the last 50 years, it certainly looks like a place that could produce a limited production sports car in the 60s and 70s. Next, we'll go across the railroad tracks and swing by the airport that Francis Lombardi founded. During World War I, he was a flying ace with the Italian Air Force, with eight kills to his name. In 1938, he developed a small aircraft which was used as a trainer for the Italian Air Force. And post-war in 1947, he started the Francis Lombardi Carrozzeria Company. Locally, he is known more for his aeronautical exploits than his automotive exploits. Post-war, he had a few airline adventures. He was the first person to go from Vercelli to Tokyo in an aircraft. And he also flew around the perimeter of Africa, both earning him silver medals in aeronautics. The next morning we swung by the factory building once again in an attempt to get inside. I was going to use the Moto Guzzi service facility as my calling card to get inside. Alas, an hour after they were supposed to be open, after waiting in the hot sun for a little bit, we decided to move on. next episode, we'll be heading to Mandelo Delario, birthplace of the Moto Guzzi, but not before we visit the Alfa Romeo Museum in Milan. If you like this video and are interested in more information about the OTAS and Francis Lombardi, I could probably make more videos about the subject. Let me know in the comments if you'd like more videos on that subject. In the meantime, like, share, and subscribe. There'll be a lot more videos coming along real soon.